Hello, everybody. This is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where five minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to go back to the fallacy of Scola Scriptura by demonstrating how Protestants pick and choose what information they want from our tradition and from their tradition. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Namura Patri, sit fili, et spiritu sancti, amen. Gloria Patri, et filio, et spiritu e sancto, secuturam principia et nuc et semper et seculi seculorum, amen. All right, so I'll put banners in for the previous uh, episodes. We have on Bible alone. Uh, we probably have four or five. And we, we tackle it from different ways. I mean, I think the most obvious way to tackle the fallacy of Bible alone is by just mentioning nowhere in the Bible does the idea of, of just Jesus there anywhere in the scripture that the handbook for Christian living is this Bible. And we know historically the Bible was written, especially we're just talking about the New Testament. The New Testament was written several decades after the ascension of Christ. And so there is no way that, that Jesus could have, have said these things. And understand that the early church didn't have the Bible. And how did they survive? Sacred oral tradition. And we know that some of that oral tradition that was passed on by the apostles and their successors were written down. And, uh, and then we also have an episode on how to deal with using the Constitution, for example. So the Constitution is a written word, of course, but it needs to be translate it needs to be enforced and interpreted and that's what we have uh, Congress for for example so again you need an active and fallible institution in this case the magisterium to be able to define uh, the Bible the Bible itself can't define alone it define itself alone and again nowhere in it does it say that it should be the, high, the guidebook for Christian living but anyways so I wanted to talk about Christology so most mainline Protestants, Lutherans, Calvinists, certainly Anglicans, will all believe in the Trinity, three persons, one distinct God. And most of the Protestants, again, mainline, because once you break away from break away from break away, you know, you're getting <laughs> into some wacky stuff, will believe in that, in that kind of the hypostatic union, the fact that Jesus was true God and true man. Now, Ask them, like, where do they get this idea from? Because it's not in the Bible. Yes, you look at places, for example, in John. I think John really is the, the gospel that talks most about the, the Trinity. And it's fleshed down. There's glimpses of it in the Old Testament. But certainly in the New Testament it is. But, but it's not fully fleshed out. And, and the term Trinity is not found in the Bible. Neither is the hypostatic union or the idea that God is true God and true man. This was fleshed out. And who was it fleshed out by? The Catholic Church. This was fleshed out by the successors of the apostles. And this is most commonly seen in the first four or five centuries in the, the, the ecumenical councils, as we call them. We have a playlist. I think I covered the first five. I haven't gone back in some time <laughs> to do Constantinople 2 and 3 and, and so forth. So I think I, the last one I did was on Chalcedon. But if you look at the first three, four councils, and you, you look at the controversies and most of the heresies of the early church, most of them dealt with Christology. What is the true nature of Jesus Christ? I mean, the most famous one is going to be Arianism. And we have a couple episodes dealing with Arianism. But the champions of apologetics who fought Arianism, like Athanasius, for example, and Ambrose. So... It was all about Christology, but ultimately the church and its in divine wisdom, because again, Jesus created a visible ecclesiastical church. It wasn't an in invisible community of believers as the Protestants will revisionist history. No, Christ afforded that. You can see this played out in scripture in Jesus' own words, which we don't have time to talk about here. But they adhered to the fact of the Trinity. Let's say the mainline Protestant denominations. And then you ask them, it's like, well, but if Bible alone is all you need to understand Jesus Christ, then, then how can you rationalize that? Well, you, you, you believe in the Trinity, but nowhere in the Gospels or in the New Testament is the word Trinity used, or is that the doctrine of that we all agree on as the Trinity is ever mentioned in the Bible? It's not. It's not. This took centuries 
like the mustard seed, the parable of the mustard seed, right? The church started small, right? With 12 guys, and look at it today. But it starts small. Christ wouldn't create a church where there's no apostolic succession, where he's like, well, after the last apostle dies, I guess that was it. I, you know, this church existed for 30 years. That's good. It was a good church. No, <laughs> he's not going to do that. Maintain to the traditions of which I've given you, whether by 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 word or by letter that's said in second thessalonians by by saint paul so there are traditions that were maintained and the protestants will agree with all these these councils now if you tell them but you know none of these things are found in actual scripture and that we had to flesh this out you know as a catholic church because all christians were catholics it was even recently i was like someone said like, you know I, I appreciate that you're you're a catholic i'm a christian and i was like reminding was like you know every christian was a catholic into the great schism a thousand years later after Christ died. But like they'll acknowledge that they do believe <coughs> in the Trinity and the hypostatic union, for example. But then you tell them, it's like, well, but that in itself demonstrates that Sola Scriptura is erroneous because for you to believe just these two things, I mean, there's other things we can talk about, just these two things, then you have to concede that there is sacred tradition. There's sacred oral tradition and that there was a magisterium, and it was a magisterium that decided after several councils, Chalcedon, probably the most famous one at the end, about 450 AD, on this, on these ideas. No, 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 but, but it's true, but it's true. They, they don't really have an answer to that because they can't acknowledge that there is sacred oral tradition. It's very hard for them to acknowledge this. Now, they'll spin it in different ways, but just, just remind them of this. Like, how many things do Protestants, mainline Protestants, or even evangelicals will believe in that are not necessarily found in the Bible? I mean, there's easy ones. <laughs> Who wrote the Gospel of Mark? Mark. Well, how do you know that? It doesn't say in Mark that Mark wrote the Gospel of Mark. So there you go. They believe in, in some sort of tradition. How do you know? Well, you know, 1 Timothy should be in the Bible. Okay, well, how do you know 1 Timothy should be in the Bible? Does 1 Timothy say anywhere that it should be in the Bible? No, because there was no Bible at the time. There was no Bible canon at the time. Even if you look at the Old Testament, there were different versions of what was perceived to be canon at the time, even though they wouldn't use that term among the, the dispersed, the diaspora Jews. But certainly, you can't say that Jesus intended 2 Thessalonians or Acts of the Apostles to be in the Bible or let's say in the New Testament in this case, when, when the New Testament didn't exist at the time. So how do you know these books deserve to be in the Bible? Well, again, it's, it's the magisterium. It's the visible church and the, that Christ created and successors that determine that because Christ told the successors of the visible church, I will be with you forever. Whatever you bound is bound. He who hears you hears me. And it goes on and on and on. Who sends you forgive or forgive it? And so forth. So he gave this authority to the church. And we have unbroken apostolic authority, apostolic succession that goes from the apostles to the present day. So in closing, ask him about the Trinity. Ask him about the hypostatic union. Tell him, you know, that's not found in the Bible. This was all ironed out by ecumenical councils, both East and West. And these were both ecumenical for both East and West, the several centuries after the time of Christ. And that, that, you, that you must concede that there must be not just sacred old tradition from which the Bible comes, but also a magistrate to determine that. Guys, post in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Share with others. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.